Okay, this thing is finally working. I am also on YouTube. And this is for the people on my Instagram live. So be sure to go there so I can get my viewers up. Last time I tried to stream on YouTube, we had some problems. There, perfect. Okay. Go to YouTube, guys. How you doing? Yes. My notes here. I'm just going to go ahead and start. And just know that I can't see anything because I'm basically reading my notes and at the end of the show or the live, I will try to answer questions or whatever. Hey guys, welcome to technically my uh, first YouTube live. The last time I tried to do a live, um, it just was not working for me. I don't know what happened. But um, today is October 1st. It's a new month. Yes. It's officially fall, the last quarter of the year. Time to, you know, get those goals checked off for 2019. Uh, thank you so much for tuning in. I actually just got back from a little shopping at Sephora. I finally got the new Fenty the Fenty uh, makeup. Uh, shout out to Nina Bella. She actually got me a, a gift card for my birthday a few months ago, and I'm finally just using it. But I'm currently wearing it. I don't know if I'm going to, like, give up on MAC altogether, but, you know, try, try new things. But I got, I wore half and half, so half of my face is... Uh, let's see. What is it called? Half of my face is the hydrating foundation pro filter. And the other half is the soft matte long wear foundation. So this half of my face is the soft matte. This half is the hydrating. So shout out to Nina. Thank you so much. For the lovely gifts. I also got the concealer, which I usually not, don't use this. I just end up using a lighter foundation, but eh, whatever. And I got uh, the nutmeg setting powder. So I'm excited to, you know, play around in this makeup. And of course they gave me my birthday gift because I didn't get it when I was supposed to get it. And I still, the girl still stopped at Mac though. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. Anyways, we'll be playing in makeup later, whatever. But um, I didn't even mean to have this story time, but as I, I, I took my phone to Apple um, because my hair phone is a six. And the battery, you know, they want you to get a new phone. The battery keeps dying. Uh, like I'll have it at a hundred percent. Two seconds later, it's at 10. And I was like, uh, -uh you guys got to fix this. So I took it to Apple and of course they gave me the spiel. They're like, Oh, the battery, the usage is done. So you need to either a get a new battery or B, uh, buy a new phone. <laughs> of course they're like, Oh, we'll, we'll buy your new phone for you. Blah, blah. I was like, no, nah, I'll get a new battery because my personal phone is the 10 and I really, I mean, the store was packed as always. I really don't see myself getting the 11 unless somebody buys it for me. Like, cause my 10 is perfect. My six is my hair phone. So I don't, I don't need, 
Anyway, so I dropped it off there. They said it is like an hour. So I figured out because I was going to go shopping for makeup anyway. So I said I would just use that time to go get my makeup. So I was walking to Sephora. This is on Lincoln Road, for those of you who are in, uh, into South Beach or know anything about South Beach. And I'm walking, you know, minding my business, enjoying the beautiful day. And some old dude <laughs> starts walking beside me. I'm like, oh, Lord, I hope this is not a bum. Because, you know, sometimes bums look regular. <laughs> but, but some old dude starts walking behind me. And he was like, beautiful day, isn't it? And I'm like, yeah, it sure is. And then I see that he's still you know, like keeping up with my pace and walking with me. And I'm like, oh Lord, what does this guy want? And then, you know, he starts, you know, bullshit conversation. And I was like, you know what? It's a beautiful day. Let me be nice to this guy. So we're talking, you know, he tells me this and that, but I could tell he was broke or at least he couldn't afford me, but I commended him on his balls. He was like, I'm on my way to a dentist appointment. I was like, hygiene is very important because some guys don't pay attention to their hygiene. Um, <laughs> he was like, oh, no, I pay attention to my hygiene, blah, blah, blah. And we're talking, whatever. And then he asked me for my number. He was looking for a card to give me, which I would have preferred. Apparently, he's an attorney or something. Um, but I, I searched him up. Everything checks out. <laughs> I already, already looked him up. But still, he's... He doesn't have the money for me, but I'll probably go out to dinner with him, you know, use it as a chance to do research on a new place that I'm going to freestyle later. That's usually what I use these guys for. Everybody has a purpose. Remember that <laughs> unless they're just flat broke, then, you know, stay away from them because that's that's contagious. But anywho, so that's the little story time. But um, thank you so much for tuning in, guys. And please be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel, to the show's channel. So that way you can get notifications and I can kind of get my follower count up so I can start monetizing on videos and maybe even start shooting more videos. Of course, it's the merch, as we know. I even have more at the store, TSEG store, you know, plug, plug. So before I dive in, for those of you who do not know me, my name is Vivian, AKA Exotic Vivian. And I am the host of the highly rated podcast, The Sexy S Word Guide. I started the show with another companion by the name of Chantelle Etoile last year, February 28th, 2018. As of today, we have over 163,000 listens from all over the world, with our top five countries being the United States, of course, because that's where I'm based, uh, Canada, the UK, the Netherlands. Uh, so shout out to you guys. And these are in order of the number of listeners. So we have the most listeners in the United States, of course, then Canada, which is North America, Australia, which I've actually uh, met some girls out of there, which I'm surprised because the show, it's kind of um, geared towards stuff in America, but a lot of people say they find it valuable. So I thank you. Thank you so much. Um, there We have listeners in over 50 countries, guys. Like. It, blew, it blows my mind every time I look at the stats on SoundCloud. Um, we've had numerous guests from attorneys, accountants. Uh, shout out to our sponsor, our diamond sponsor, Companion Tax. Ayo. Uh, psychologists, dating coaches, dominatrix, sugar baby, other companions. I still haven't done a stripper yet. I know I said that last time, but very soon, my darlings. I'm going to have one on the show. Um, and also, as a disclaimer... I'm also learning as I go. I will give tips that have worked for me, but they're not the only way to be successful in this business because I get a lot of uh, people saying that, you know, either they don't like the way I did something or they don't think it's the right way or whatever. You know, people always have something to complain about. People are always complaining about something. So, yeah, just... Take everything I say and do your own research. Actually, you don't even have to take everything I say. Just listen. If anything, you know, vibes with you, then do it. Otherwise, you don't have to do anything. I'm just doing this because I want to, you know, have a platform for us, you know, to share and network and all that good stuff. That's why I started the show in the first place. And now I'm branching into YouTube because everybody keeps telling me do YouTube. So here we are. 
But anyways, you can find uh, links to the show's contents in the About Me section. Um, you can also find the show's website, SoundCloud, Patreon, store, and social media. And that's in the About Me section of uh, the YouTube page that you're on. Okay, on to the nitty gritty. I will first answer questions that have been written to the show. And then I'm going to do story time on my latest freestyling success. So the little story time I did earlier, that's just, that was like, just happened today. That was a fluke. Say no to time wasters. Okay. <laughs> Um, oh, I almost forgot. I'm throwing a fabulous Halloween party in Miami on October 26th from 7 p.m. till midnight. This is open to all industry, adult industry uh, entertainers <laughs> and the clients. Of course, you have to be screened. Uh, gentlemen and ladies are welcome, even male companions. I'm hoping that I, I was hoping that I would get some male companions at this party, but you know, it's still young. I still have a few tickets left. Uh, it's going to be in a private villa, catered food, bespoke bar with a sexy bar staff, uh, DJ spinning central tunes. My favorite photographer, Paul, with Sexy Lux Studio is going to be there, as he has always been at all our events. And the ladies can even get some um, professional quality shots with him so you can see the difference between selfies and glamour professional photography. And he's doing this free of charge. So shout out to Paul. And if you want to book him uh, for a private shoot, you can go to his website, sexyluxstudio.com, or you can contact him directly, Paul Kobo at sexyluxstudio.com. So this party is just basically gonna be debauchery with an upscale cloud. Yes, cloud, crowd. <laughs> oh, I swear it's happy hour, but I'm drinking tea, not not champagne. But yeah, debauchery with an upscale crowd, you know, it's be a good time for you to network with other ladies, meet some clients. Some clients are actually going to be there. So it's going to be a nice, you know, fun party. And then there's going to be a $500 cash prize for the best Halloween costume. So make sure you come dressed to kill it, honey. Um, and this is provided by our diamond sponsor, Companion Tax. Shout out. And also marketing genius, Amberly Rockfield. She's been on the show a few times. So shout out to them for, you know, giving the cash prize. So uh, VIP tickets are sold out. That sold out like right away. Um, but there's still general admission tickets. The VIP guests get to spend the night in the mansion. That's the difference between the VIP tickets and the general admission tickets. Um, and I, like I said, there's still a few tickets left. So uh, definitely you want to grab yours. There are already some smoking hot women that are going to be at this party. If you want to see who they are, go to thesexyescortguy.com slash events. Uh, of course, like I said, everyone must be screened for safety and discretion. And if you want to RSVP to this phenomenal, mind-blowing, revolutionary party, <laughs> go to thesexyescortguy.com slash RSVP. I hope to see you at my party next month. Yes. Anyways, my parties are the shit. Ask the people that have been. <laughs> All right. So let me read the questions and I will answer. And I told these ladies that I would be answering them on this video. So once this is done, I'm actually going to post it uh, on the YouTube page so they can come back and listen. This is from Scarlett. The subject is companion. She filled out the um, form on our website, thesexyescortguide.com. Hello, I'm a very low volume provider in Ohio. I found you guys on the podcast on iHeartRadio. I didn't even know we were on there, but apparently we're everywhere now. Because <laughs> we use the platform um, SoundCloud and that kind of just distributes it to all the you know, venues, iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play, everything. But anyway, she says, um, I found you guys on iHeartRadio and I really appreciate your show. Thank you. I'm inquiring about how I can apply to be on your provider list. She's asking about our little black book of introductions. And I've been getting this email a lot. So I figured I would just read just this one and then answer it for everybody that's been emailing. That list has been discontinued because we're going to be launching 
um, our dating site coming up this fall, winter. So keep your eyes peeled for that. Of course, I would announce it on the show once everything's good to go. It's going to be a dating site uh, for us and, you know, the men who love us. <laughs> um, it's not going to be like your typical directly. It's going to be similar to your um, um, bumbles and stuff like that. And it, it's not going to have the app version just yet. It's just going to be website only. And then, you know, once we build the, you know, people on there, then we'll grab the app as well. But stay tuned for that. That's going to be replacing the little black book of introductions. Sorry, ladies. It's just, it's a lot of work and it's just easier for us to just do the dating site. I keep saying us. <laughs> I forget Chantel is no longer with with the show. Anyways, the next question from Anonymous. Subject, question for the podcast. Hi, Vivian. I'm a little embarrassed about this, but I have a question that I was hoping you could answer on the podcast. Or if you've already gone over this, can you direct me to the episode? We probably have, but I'm still going to answer it. I had a client who I recently developed feelings for. Ooh. Mm. If you could see my eyes, I'm side eyeing. <laughs> Um, I did not know how to navigate the situation because I've never felt that way about a client. I felt like there were so many dynamics I had to remain cognizant of. I've never been monogamous even prior to being a companion. So I didn't elaborate too much on what I was feeling for him because I didn't want him to think that I wanted a stereotypical vanilla relationship with him. I'm glad you didn't say anything. I also did not want to cross professional boundaries or scare him off. I let him know that I was turned on by him in a way that I had never been turned on by a client before. But now I'm wondering if that, if, if even that was crossing a professional boundary, I was wondering if this has ever happened to you <laughs> or any other girls, you know, and I was hoping you could give me advice on how to best navigate the situation. If it happens again, how do you speak up about your feelings in this situation? in a way that is productive rather than counterproductive. Thank you. Okay, so Miss Anonymous. Um, <laughs> oh, and she did email uh, yesterday because I told her I was going to answer it on the show. She said she forgot about him now. So I guess she got over her feelings really quickly. So that would be the first thing I say you should do. Sleep on it for a very long time. Give yourself like a month. <laughs> Sleep on it. Um, and you should probably remind yourself that you're falling in love or, you know, having feelings for a version of him, not the actual him. You probably are falling for him because he's giving you nice gifts. You know, he's treating you very well. He's polite. He's a gentleman. All that good shit can make a girl like a guy. But falling for a client, oh, that's a no, no. And I've heard this before. The lines could get blurry, especially if you guys are seeing each other a lot. Um, you know, the money is flowing. So people tend to get caught up. But I advise against it. Although you can't really, I guess you can't help who you like, but you can help how you react to it. So the minute you see that, you know, you're getting feelings for a client, take a step back and sleep on it. Do not say shit. Because this guy could be married, has a girlfriend, whatever. Don't fuck up your bag, okay? Do not <laughs> mess up your bag for some feelings that are temporary and could go away. That's, that is my best advice. How to, you know, navigate it if it happens again? Do you speak up? No. <laughs> talk to your friends. Talk to, you know, whoever. <laughs> Talk to anybody, talk to your therapist. I don't know. Talk to anybody else about it but him because that's just not good. Like you could spook him, like you said, scare him off. And then now you don't have money and you don't have the guy. Wouldn't you rather just have your money? Like, come on. Anyway, so yeah, ladies, no, don't fall for, for your clients. Okay, next question. This is from... Uh, Miss M, subject, gratitude is my attitude. Uh, and she got, she also filled out the form on the website. Actually, all these people filled out the booking form. Not the booking form. <laughs> I'm thinking this is a client. All these people filled out the um, 
form on our website that you can send to us to ask questions. So, okay, this is from Miss M, and the subject is gratitude is my attitude. And she said, "Hello, lovely. Thank you for sharing your knowledge and passion for this industry. I have been listening to your podcast, and I have gained so much." Uh, thank you. Um, before listening, I have been freestyling, but didn't know it by a name <laughs> and sugaring for quite some time. I have a daytime career and have always felt like my double life was such a secret. Hearing two successful and proud ladies in the industry really made me feel like I wasn't all alone. Since discovering your podcast, I have hired the PS group. Shout out to them. They sponsored a few episodes after hearing about them from you. And as of May launched my website. Um, I've had great success for years freestyling and really the website has been the icing on the cake. Good for you, girl. See, there are some girls that get their start freestyling and I feel like that's probably the best way to start because then you can do both. Um, where was I? I'm trying to have more of a presence on Twitter and Instagram, but I find it difficult to juggle my career and companion business at times. Girl, it happens to all of us. I have also started my own LLC this year, and I'm working on investments with a few client mentors. Good for you. My real issue is my vanilla career, exclamation mark. Fortunately slash unfortunately, I have earned two degrees, and I'm passionate about what I do, and I cannot give it up. Although when I make my entire month's salary in one overnight, it is tempting to walk away and devote all my time and energy into this. Thank you for being such an inspiration and motivating me to keep going in this field. Oh, uh, you're welcome, and thanks for listening. Oh, excuse me. Um, I have a couple of questions for you. One, what is your alternative to the P.O. box for wish list items? Two, have you ever used a screening service, or perhaps have you one you would recommend? I always screen, but I feel like I'm missing some pro tip secrets or alternative ways to screen. I run background checks, call their place of business, use Google, Facebook, LinkedIn, and it takes up my time. Uh, girl, your safety is worth it. Is there a reliable service that will do this for me? And number three, I would love to be listed in a little black book, which I already said that was discontinued. I'm going to go back to your podcast and re-listen to the steps I need to take for this. To show you some appreciation, I sent you a few items from your wish list. I hope I did this correctly. And I purchased your audiobook. But I really don't think that even comes close to showing my gratitude for all that you've done for me. You have been a true inspiration. Aw, thank you, girl. And I did get it. Um, she sent me a plant. I potted it. My um, hibiscus uh, flower plant. So thank you so much. I had it on my wish list, and she grabbed it for me. Appreciate it. Um, with warm wishes and deepest gratitude. P.S. I would love to meet up next time I'm in Miami. I don't have anyone to really talk to about this part of my life and would love to share my story and lift up another beautiful woman. I hope Chantel is doing well. I was sad she had to leave the show. Cheers. So, yes. Thank you so much for your gratitude. I mean, it's nice to see someone that actually appreciates and finds value in this free show. <laughs> so, uh Thank you very much for the gift, for everything. And I'm always open to meeting new ladies. So just shoot me an email whenever, you know, like a few weeks before you get in town and we'll try to coordinate. If I'm not working, sure, let's let's go freestyling since you're so successful. We can like be two peas in a pod. All right, so let me um, answer your question. Well, I'll make a comment about you juggling your civvy job and your hair job. Everybody deals with it. Some people can't even manage their time and they do this full time. So it's all about time management. So you have to figure out a way to do it. I wouldn't advise that you quit anything until you have investments that are making you enough money where you don't have to work. So suck it up, do what you got to do, figure out better time management. Um, as far as the alternative to the P.O. box for wish list items, email me again because I don't want to, you know, put it out here in public, <laughs> have people like, you know, know all the secrets. 
No, darling. No, no. Um, but there, there is a way to do it. Um, and then screening service. Girl, personally, especially post FOSTA, SESTA, I am not a fan of putting your livelihood in the hands of anybody else. Yes, even I have an assistant, but I trained her, but I still go over, um, like when she sends me the details of the guy and I've, I've trained her how to screen, I still go back over with a fine tooth comb. I mainly use her to screen out the time wasters and people that are tire kickers because I just don't have time for that. But I still go back and make sure she did the screening the way I like. So this is just a part of the job that I personally feel that you need to handle yourself because the last thing you, especially if you're paying this person per booking, so then they have the incentive to book as many people as possible. You know, some people do per month, but then they don't have an incentive to, you know, book you quality clients because they're going to get paid anyway. So it's like a catch 22. But, um, yeah, I just, I say you need to just suck it up and handle your screening. Maybe hire somebody to do the, you know, screen out the time wasters part. There are plenty of, uh, assistants out there, you know, former companions, whatever, whatever, do your research. If you want some recommendations, send me an email, Vivian at tsegp.com. Also send me an email about the uh, mailbox thing. But, um, oh, I need a massage. But, um, <laughs> yeah, uh, just keep in the back of your mind, because people always ask me about screening. You want to, like if somebody said, hey, I need you, I'm going to hire you to find out everything you can on this person. What would you ask them for? That is the information you need to be getting from these people. You want to find as much real life, real world information on them so you know that A, they're real, and B, they're not the you know who. <laughs> Popo's coming. Popo's coming. No. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so take your screening very seriously. Whether it's time consuming or not, it's worth it. Um, and of course, number three, the little black book that's been discontinued. Stay tuned for the dating website coming up very soon. All right, next question. Hello, TSDG. This person clearly does not really listen to the show. <laughs> Maybe she thinks it's different people. I don't know. Um, hello. Hello, TSCG. I'm a newbie, and I've been listening to your podcast, which I love, by the way. Thank you. I tried to submit my question via your website, and there was an error. I don't know how, because everybody else is submitting. Actually, I actually ended up getting her submission, so she emailed and she sent the form, but whatever. Um, here are my questions. What platforms do you use to accept deposits? Um, and two, what do you mean when you say pay your taxes? <laughs> Girl, are you serious? Okay. Are you paying your taxes via an LLC for sex work or another business you use as your sex work LLC? I'm confused since sex work is illegal in the United States. The process, wait, in the U.S., the process for companions to pay taxes. Thank you, Jade. Okay. The last sentence but was a little off um first of all i'm just gonna go ahead and say i don't condone doing anything illegal because that but um number one you said what platforms do i use to accept deposits cash is king so zelle zelle is basically cash transfer from their bank to your bank it'll behoove you to have a business bank account which you don't need an llc to open a business bank account you can open a doing business as but listen to episodes 58 because we talk a little bit about this when it comes to anonymity anon anon yeah anonymity <laughs> like am I, am I using all the syllables um we talk about it on episode 58 me and mary lee of companion tax um gift rocket is also a good one but you want to make sure you 
transfer that ASAP because, you know, they could cancel it. So if you're doing gift rocket, probably do it if it's a appointment in the future. Because after once you've transferred it after a certain time, they can't, I think once you transfer it, they can't renege on it. So um, they can send you via FedEx, <laughs> even though Chantel mentioned um, it's illegal to send cash via mail. I don't know. Still haven't looked that up, but your grandma does it. So why not your client? Anyway, so those are a few things. Um, they're not really very many adult entertainment friendly banking stuff. So you just got to do the best you can. Uh, what do I mean when I say pay your taxes? Exactly that. <laughs> pay your taxes. That's, that's what I mean. Pay your taxes. We've, we've stressed it. So go back and listen to episode seven, 36 and 58 with our diamond sponsor accountant, uh, companion tax, Mary Lee. We talk about a wealth of information on there and it's all free on the podcast. Um, go to soundcloud.com slash TSCGP and you can find it. And it's, it's on, um, other listening platforms, iTunes, like I said, Google play, Stitcher, apparently iHeartRadio, yada, yada, yada. So go back and listen to those to see, um, how you can structure your business or whatever for your tax purposes. And then if you listen to episode 58, there is a code at the end of the show that if you use it when you contact companion tax, you get a free consultation. Then you can ask her, you know, some questions to help you stay on track. But at the end of the day, if you're confused, ask a professional and companion tax is there for you. So feel free to use them. That's all I can tell you because the way I structure my business, because I have other things going on, it's not just this. I'm not just, a, <laughs> so I structure my business differently. Um, accounting wise and tax wise. So every, everybody is different. Talk to her or your accountant and get a better answer. Okay. Next, this is from Aria. Subject, and she filled out the form. See, the form works. Um, subject is newbie website. Hello, Vivian. I want to start out by saying I've been listening to your show for a few months, and I love everything you're doing to help educate and empower fellow companions. Oh, thanks. Um, I purchased your book and gained a lot of valuable information from it. I'm aware the book advises against using free website free websites, but as a new provider, I'm trying to be cost effective. If you have time, can you review my site and give me any input, things to add, take out, et cetera? And she sent me the website. And I looked at a girl, first of all, you're gorgeous. Second of all, your wife is, I say your wife. <laughs> your website, the hell am I thinking about wife right now? Your website is perfect. It just cannot be a Wix site. She used Wix, no. Get, a, get your own domain name, get hosting. You can do this for as little as 20 bucks a month or even less, you know, to do hosting. Email me if you need some host recommendations because I'm not plugging anybody until they pay me. Um, well, plugging anyone publicly until they pay me. Um, but email me, Vivian at tscgp.com if you want a recommendation on who to use as a hosting company. Um, but your website is gorgeous. I wouldn't change anything except Wix. <laughs> Go get your own domain name and host it yourself. And if you're scared that you're not going to be able to design the way Wix makes it easy, WordPress. Everybody uses WordPress now, and they have so many different plugins that you can use to build your website, and it can look just like this from scratch. You don't need Wix. I don't even know how much, I mean, for what they're charging, which I'm sure it's not free, or maybe it is, I don't know, but... <sighs> You can afford 20 bucks a month. Go, yeah, go get your own and do not use them as hosting, please. <laughs> go get, go get your own domain name, please. This really galls me, by the way. <laughs> These fruit flies and whatever websites, ugh, just get your own, it's so much easier. 
Um, okay, next question. Uh, okay, this person emailed directly. Hi, I'm starting to think about entering the world of paid companionship. Um, I sent a message to a companion to ask for pointers, and she led me to your podcast Instagram. Ooh, thank you, whoever that was. Um, I purchased and read your book on how to start as an escort, but I still have a few questions that I don't think the book addressed. Mm -hmm. People always say this, but it probably already addressed it. Number one, what does it mean exactly to be a GFE companion? Of course, for those of you who are vanillas, GFE means girlfriend experience. You've seen the terrible show on Showtime or HBO, one of those networks. There's a show called Girlfriend Experience. Anyways. Are there different types of companions and what does it mean to be 100% independent? Number two, from checking out various companions websites, most offer in-call and seem to have properties to have these in-call dates or are these done in home? Would you recommend newbies do out-call dates only to upscale hotels, especially if they don't have a separate property aside from their actual house? Number three, I also noticed some companions had regular rates, but also rates for social dates in a public setting. Why is that? Couldn't any date be in public? I guess I'd like to know the difference between in call, between an in call and out call date and a social date, if there is one. Number four, of course, sex in exchange for money is illegal. Yes, it is. We don't recommend it. And escorting companionship clients are paying for your time. So how do you get clients to understand that dynamic, especially beforehand, so they don't come to a date expecting sex right off the bat? Number five, I've seen sites offering porn star experience, which I suppose guarantees sex, but what is a trip or tour to Greece? Girl, I was dying laughing when I was reading this. You could tell this is definitely a newbie. Um, hopefully I was able to word my, word my questions properly. Thank you. I'm just going to read you my response to her because, because I emailed her back and I responded, um, because initially I told her to get the book, which she did. And then she had these questions. Um, so my response, most of the questions you asked would be based on your personal preference and exactly what you're trying to achieve. You might want to reread chapter one and get clear on your goals. <laughs> so there you go. First, first answer out of the bat was already in the book. GFE means girlfriend experience, as I just said. How a girlfriend behaves with her boyfriend is going to vary from woman to woman. So you would need to decide on what you're comfortable with doing with your clients. I cannot tell you what to do here. And that's true because this is a very subjective business. This is actually one of the most subjective business in the service industry because you're literally spending social intimate time with these clients. Anyways, 100% independent means you work for yourself and handle all your marketing, screening, and bookings. It means that you do not work for an agency or anyone else for that matter. As for in-call locations, again, every girl is different. When on tour, most ladies almost always stay in hotels or vacation rentals. When you are at home, you will have to decide what is safe and financially doable for you. I know some high-end ladies in New York that work out of their apartment simply because things are very expensive. They do just fine. I know some ladies that only work out of hotels. Either one works. You just have to decide what you want. As for rates, each companion sets her rates based on what she wants. I can't tell you what to charge or what services to offer. You need to reread chapter three. See, it's all in there. Like a lot of this, I mean, I could tell she was a newbie, which is why I took my time to write her this email. Porn star experience is usually when a client books an actual porn star. Over the years, some ladies have decided they want to offer it and they've turned it into something else. But that's literally what a porn star experience is. It means you're with a porn star. Uh, Greece means anal. <laughs> oh, geez. I remember the first time when I first got started and I heard that term and I literally, because the guy was like using all the acronyms. He's like, do you speak French? 
Greece. I was like, oh, I speak a little bit of French. I've never been to Greece, like dumbass, but Greece means anal. <laughs> oh boy, I definitely do not miss the review board days. Um, okay, let me finish reading what I wrote to her. At the end of the day, if you're not comfortable with being intimate with another person on the same day you meet them, then this line of work is probably not for you. These men are not trying to be your boyfriend. They're coming to you for a fantasy experience and paying you money to spend time with you. You can't take from someone and not give anything back in return. That would be extremely selfish of you. You want these guys to keep coming back. That's how you build your income in this business. Repeat clientele. I've said this a million times. If you're hung up about having sex, then maybe you just need to date traditionally, like sugaring or go strip, where the guys are never upfront about their intentions and you could end up having to go out with a guy for free numerous times before you even see a dollar. And that's if you know how to get from uh, get money from men naturally. Being a companion is just easier for both parties without the bullshit that comes with traditional dating. Good luck on your journey. But yeah, that's that's what I wrote to her, and it's pretty much self-explanatory. <sighs> if you have hangups, because there are bitches that are out here sleeping with dudes, one night stands, sleeping with dudes for free, doing all this stuff for free, and here you have guys that are willing to give you money, I don't, for me, that's a panty dropper. When a guy is generous to me, I don't know about you. <laughs> I don't know about you, but when a guy is generous to me, that's a panty dropper. I'm just saying. But I told her if she's that hung up on sex, people are laughing on the live Instagram live. If you're that hung up on sex or whatever, then you probably need more time to get your mind. Go keep reading chapter one. <laughs> How about that? Until you figure it out. Okay. Next question. Hi, I've been listening to TSCG since the beginning. You wit. <laughs> I love the OG listeners. Um, and I'm always appreciative of the info and interviews. As an effort to break myself of shyness, I want to try freestyling. Even if I go out and not get business, I'm happy to have had a chance to reprogram myself to become more social. This is key. I'm a down-to-earth lady, pretty natural, though I look lovely with some makeup and a sexy dress. Uh, everybody looks lovely with makeup and a sexy dress. Even men <laughs> look lovely. They call them drag queens. <laughs> They look lovely with some makeup and a sexy dress. Um, where was I? Oh, I don't own the batons. Oh, Lord. <laughs> Must I see this again? This is like in, in, in Twitter world. Everyone's obsessed with name brands and all this shit. Ugh. I'm going to sip some tea. Okay, where was I? I don't own Louboutins or a Gucci bag. Not my style. Anywho. <laughs> Made me mess up my bangs. Okay. Um, think more Venice Beach than Beverly Hills, I suppose. Any ideas of great Los Angeles places, especially on the west side? If you're talking West Hollywood, I don't know, to freestyle that doesn't require super upscale wardrobe. I know where the wealthy tech guys who are low. I know there are wealthy tech guys who are low key, just not sure where to find them. Thanks, Anita. Girl. Why are people so against doing what they need to do to get? what they need to get easily. Why do you insist on working so hard? Like, am I the only one that hates working? <laughs> Cause I feel like I am. <laughs> Shit. Um, uh, a girl we had on a podcast, Amber, uh, she's based in Europe. She made a comment saying, to the alternative girls that are complaining that business is slow. She's like, if your nose ring 
is not helping you book clients, then maybe you should take it out just for work until you get to where you need to be. And then, you know, you can do whatever you want. And of course, Twitter came for her dragging her, you know, oh, you can still be this and make money. That's not what she said. But I'm going to, I'm going to attempt to answer your question. <laughs> oh, this is getting, this is getting me a crap in my neck. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to attempt to answer your question, but I'm going to first say that there is nothing wrong with everybody has done it. Even fucking Bill Gates, even fucking Jeff Bezos, he did some shitty things that he didn't want to do or things that he considered, you know, too much work. He did them in the beginning to get to most richest man in the world status, even after he divorced his wife, who took almost half. Now he can basically buy all of the girls at our uh, Halloween party, which Jeff Bezos, if you're listening, let me appeal to you real quick. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. No, I'm not kidding. But <laughs> Bezos, if you're listening, come to our party, please buy it out. Let's let's hang out. Yas. 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 Okay. Where was I? I got I got caught up. Um, so yeah, sometimes even Oprah said it, do what you need to do to get to where you need to go until you don't have to do it anymore. Then you can relax. You work, you work hard now, so you don't have to work hard later. You get it? Because life is short and we only have like maximum a hundred years on this earth. Some people don't even live that long. You don't want to spend, you know, your golden years tired and working because you didn't do what you were supposed to do when you were young and had all the energy to do it. So now that I've said that, how can you meet the wealthy tech guys? I'm going to tell you right now, most of them are nerds. So they, you know who they like the fucking bitches that are all glammed up with the dresses and makeup and their hair. That's who they like. Some of them might like girl next door because that was the girl that reminded them of some girl in high school that they wanted. But most of them wanted to fuck the cheerleader. I'm just going to go ahead and tell you that right now. The girly girl, the girl that was putting on makeup, that's who they want. So where can you find them? Figure out where all the um, startup tech companies are. Figure out that area. Go to restaurants in that area. Go there during lunch because, you know, sometimes they take long. So don't know. A lot of these um, tech companies have such a great uh, cafeteria in the office that, you know, their employees don't need to leave. But they still leave for happy hour. So find the upscale places or the, the places near that area where the companies are, where their headquarters are. Go there for happy hour. Go there for lunch. See what happens. But still look good. At least wear makeup. And, you know, have decent hair. <laughs> That's what wigs are for. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, that's that's what, what you would need to do. And I've said this, like, a million times. You don't need designer wear to snag a dude. You just need to look expensive. And you can literally, I mean, maybe I'm the only one that knows how to do this, but hold on, my face is getting shiny and I don't like the way it looks on camera. <laughs> See, even I want to make sure that I'm not greasy because I have very oily skin naturally. There. Um, what was I saying? Oh yeah, you don't have to. You don't have to wear expensive clothes to look expensive. I can go to Forever Twenty One and buy everything out of there and still walk out looking like a million bucks. It's just a gift I have, you know, and then confidence is everything, but don't work harder than you need to. Like, just don't. 
I, I don't even like working at all. So if I must, I'm going to find a better way to do things. But that's just me. I, I thought most people were like this, but I guess not. Um, hey, girl, hey. <laughs> uh, okay, next question. Also filled out the form on the website from Nancy. Subject, you rock. And thank you. Uh, message body. Uh, I just want to say that I've been a companion for nine years. I'm 37 years old right now, and I've just stumbled across your podcast, and I want to let you know how delighted I am to hear you guys, you guys' point of view on our type of work. You would think that after doing it for so long, I would have somewhat of a broader understanding, but for years, I have suffered with guilt, and listening to your podcast have made me feel more confident and level-headed about the whole industry. I work independently, so I don't really have a lot of people that I can get advice from or can reach out to as a community. Thank you for being open and letting so many people who are either working in this industry or clients or people who are just curious have this outlet. Boom. She gave me a boom fist bump emoji. Um, Nikki. Thank you, girl. Thanks for the high praise. Thanks that you find value in the show. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. You're welcome. But yeah, I mean, that is one of the things I found, you know, even from when I was dancing, there are a lot of girls in this business in the adult entertainment business that actually feel guilty about it. Like so much so that they end up being pick me's in a way, like so much so that they end up overcompensating, you know, in their real life. Like if they get a boyfriend, they'll date a deadbeat that they take care of because somehow they feel shamed about what they do. And these guys prey on them. Like, I know a few girls that fell prey to it. You know who you are. <laughs> but, yeah. I don't... I mean, I'm, I'm glad you ha you found an outlet with the show, but I just never understood people that feel guilty about doing this line of work. I've never had that feeling in my body. Even when I got outed when I was a stripper, <laughs> I basically was like, it is what it is, parents. <laughs> but yeah. Anyways, but I'm glad I'm glad you're enjoying the show. Next. Also filled out the form on the website. This is from Paul, a oh, guy. Uh, the subject is accepting payments other than cash. And they said, do you covering your book one of, or one of the podcasts, the issue of receiving payments other than cash? It seems like a lot of entities, both credit card processors and online payment services, hunt down and ban sex workers from their client list. Are there any sex worker friendly services out there? Are there ways to stay under the radar so you don't get banned, etc.? What about cryptocurrency? Um, yeah, finance is definitely a tricky gray area um, because we operate in mostly cash in this business. And, you know, when people wanted to move to, you know, technology and online stuff, I've heard so many stories of people's accounts getting shut down. PayPal was one of the first people that would, like, freeze your account and keep your money um, when they find out that you're anything adult-related, which is funny because I think they used to be a, a, a option, a payment option for arrows back in the day. I think so. Because I was doing my research on it, and I believe they did. And then all of a sudden, they changed their mind or whatever. But anyways, um, cryptocurrency. I mean, I accept Bitcoin, but there are a lot of girls that don't really know much about that. Because it's, it's definitely an underground-ish type of way to do business. And not very many people do cryptocurrency. Here's the thing. There's nothing wrong with it. It's just that most people don't know about it. So it's like, how do I explain? It's like you want the the method that most people are familiar with. Like the other day I tweeted about how I taught an old guy, older guy client of mine how to use Zelle to send me money. Um, but I like screenshot and I had to circle things. But he did it pretty quickly because, you know, it's not like he's dumb. It's just that technology, you know, some of it can get a little tricky and you want something that's as easy as possible for your clients to do. 
because when things get too complicated, they're just going to be like, ah, fuck it. I don't need this. And they'll just move on to something else. So yeah, that's just our plight right now. So all I can say is for the people who are having issues, try to try to use Hmm. That's what I was going to say. I lost my turn of thought for a second. Try to open business accounts. And like I said, you don't need an LLC to open a business account. You know, listen to episode 58. Try to open business accounts because they're not as heavily scrutinized by the banks as your personal accounts. We, a we answer so many questions about banking and finances on episode 58. So please go back and listen to it because you're going to gain a wealth of information on there. And also episode seven. Um, let's see. Next question. Oh, that's it. Okay. So now I'm going to move on to story time. Cause I said, I was going to tell you about my, um, most recent successful freestyling, <laughs> um, escapade. Hmm. Okay, so a couple of weeks ago, I had a client of mine in Palm Beach. He had me come up to see him for a few hours. Ooh, excuse me. So I reached out to a colleague of mine. Um, I've hung out with her before in the past, um, freestyling. Um, so I reached out to her to see if she wanted to go out afterwards. You know, even though it was a weekday and it was off season, I figured we could just go grab dinner, drinks, and just network. And also to kind of see if there had been any changes made to the area, you know, to see any new spots that might be good for when season comes to freestyle. Because I plan on spending more time in Palm Beach because after you hear this story, you will see why I think it's great. Because I feel like it's so, it's a lot easier, put it that way. And we all know how I feel about, you know, not making my life hard. Anyways, um, so I figured we could just grab dinner, drinks, network, whatever, even if we didn't catch anything. But lo and behold, we did. Um, <laughs> if you want to know exactly where we went specifically, go on the show's Patreon page, patreon.com slash T-S-E-G-P. It's only a dollar a month. I would give the specific places and apps to use for your freestyling success because I'm not trying to, like, tell the whole world and ruin my spot, you know. So I'm just going to share it with my close friends. Um, so my colleague arrived a few minutes before me, um, and she had scoped out the place and she said there were two dudes at the bar that looked like potential. So I valeted my car, um, and she met me outside. When I tell you the minute <laughs> we literally walked in before we sat down for two seconds, my guy, who I would call my guy because he's the guy I ended up hanging out with, he um, starts chatting us up, buys us shots, suggests things on the menu. Um, apparently, he was part owner of the restaurant <laughs> or, you know, a partner. Like he had a steak in the restaurant or whatever. Um, he ordered us food on the menu, you know, and then I, like he was like, you should try these things. They're the best. I got you. I was like, oh, cool, you know, just chit-chatting. And, like, he was definitely the outgoing one. Because then his friend <laughs> joins him, his friend's an attorney. And, um, you know, we all start talking. They're over there bragging about how they went to Yale and Harvard. And I'm over there just sucking it up. Because that's literally them auditioning for you to let you know that, you know, hey, I have money to spend on you. <laughs> And I love it because their ego is great because I'm just like, oh, wow, really? And they're showing us their watches and all this stuff. And I'm like, yes, I love it. Anyways, the the one guy, my guy, was a little crazy. Like, I could tell, like, he's he, he was definitely a strip club client. Like, I knew he was a strip club client. But guess what he says? Oh, do you guys want to go to the strip club after this? So <laughs> I turned to 
to my colleague and I'm like, yeah, we're going to make money tonight. <laughs> Literally, that was what I said. Hold on, I'm trying to start up my... um. Hold on. I'm trying to restart up my Instagram live because apparently it um, stops after an hour. Even though you guys should be here on my YouTube channel. Anyways, so what was I saying? Um... Great, now I lost my trend of thought. Oh yeah, so he's like, oh, you know, we should go to the strip club. And I turned to my friend and I'm like, we're making money tonight. I just I just felt it. So we're over there chit-chatting. In the middle of us chit-chatting, dude goes outside to meet his Coke dealer <laughs> to get things. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. We're definitely making money tonight. <laughs> oh, geez. It was too funny. I mean, everything was so poetic. Like, it was perfect. Anyways, he goes outside, comes back in. We're chatting. We're goofing off. We're drinking. You know, just having a good time. Um, And then it's time for us to depart the establishment. And I asked the bartender. I was like, oh, um, do you have our, our tab? She prints it out. You know, because he covered, like, the stuff that he had initially suggested. But I ordered extra things because, you know, a girl got to eat and I'm a foodie. So she prints it out. And as she's walking towards me, I was like, you can just hand it to either one of these gentlemen. And they're, like, over there struggling to, to see who was going to pay the bill. I was like, yes. <laughs> oh, that's what I love to see, men fighting to pay your bills. Yes. Anyways, so somebody paid it. I wasn't paying attention once it was out of my hands. So we go outside, and uh, my guy uh, was driving, even though he, at this point I we did not feel like he should drive. Mm -mm. No. Uh, and he's like, yeah, so it's true club. And I was like, well, I pulled both of them to the side. I'm like, well, you have two options. You could go to the strip, we could go to the strip club, which would be great. And you know, we can have such a great time and I'm down. Or <laughs> we could go back to your place and have even more fun. Of course, my guy's like, fuck yeah. <laughs> he might've did a bump in the bathroom. I don't know. <laughs> He's like, fuck yeah, let's go. I'm like, all right. But of course, uh, we made sure my uh, colleague drove because he was he was a little too drunk. And meanwhile, his uh, significant other was blowing up his phone. So I knew this was going to be a quick, <laughs> easy situation. Anyway, so we go to uh, his friend's house. Who, both of them were in, involved, by the way. But their ladies, well, one of them, their, his lady was out of town. The other one, lady was at home. And we get to his beautiful place on the water. Like I could just smell the money there. But on the on the drive there, his friend was so intrigued or curious. He was like, oh my God. So is this something you ladies do? Did we fall into your trap? How, how does this work? I was like, bro, you need to just chill out <laughs> and relax. <laughs> so we get there. Um Alexa, I saw Alexa and I'm like, oh, you have Alexa. Alexa lights up. I'm like, oh shit. I'm like, Alexa, play some music. And she starts playing music. I'm like, oh yes. We pop open some Dom, Crystal, whatever. We're dancing, we're doing things. And then, you know, it's time for finances. And <laughs> it was too easy because he had Zell. So I just had him Zell me the money. So it was like no money exchange hands. It's perfect. We hung out, blah, blah, blah. Um, and a, a great night was had by all. I ended up having a fabulous day because I already had my client before. And then this was like extra money that the universe sent to me. So thank you, universe. But yeah, it was it was great. 
But which that brings me to my other thing I'm going to say is who you're freestyling with, your freestyling partner. Like this girl, I, I freestyled with her before. And I also caught fish the last time I was with her. I call her my good luck charm now. Because <laughs> uh, so far, two for two. Um, your partner has to also be right there with you. When things are off, that could mess up your bag. You know, and you also have to know how to size up these guys because if like if I like if I hadn't turned to her and said we're gonna make money tonight, she probably would have thought, eh, you know. But you just have to know how to size up people based on just talking to them. Now I can kind of do it, but you know, it, it takes some practice. So like the one girl that wrote the show said she's gonna go out more just to get practice. I feel like everyone should definitely get practice for sure because it makes a hell of a difference. I promise you. But anyway, so that's my um, that's my freestyling uh, phenomenon. I wasn't even trying. I just thought I didn't even think it was gonna be popping because it's Palm Beach. It's Palm Beach off season. I figured it was gonna be dead, which it kind of was dead. Because when we walked in, there were actually two other girls in the bar who I was like, oh, I think these are hoes too. And my colleague was like, nah. <laughs> I was like, yeah. Like, but they look so plain. I was like, yeah, because you don't have to try in Palm Beach. That's why when we walked in, we just blew them out the water. The, the guy was initially trying to talk to them and buy them shots. The minute we walked in, he was like, who? Like, he completely forgot they existed. But um, would this live be saved? Yeah. It's going to play for 24 hours. And then this is, I'm also live on YouTube. So you can go on the YouTube uh, channel and view this again. I'm going to have this on YouTube as well. Um, oh, and here's a tip for you. There is an app, which I will post in the show's Patreon page. This app tells you all of the conferences that are happening near you. It gives you the hotel information where these conferences are taking place. So what you can do is, Go to the hotel for happy hour, provided it's an upscale hotel. Um, but that's And that's usually when the work stuff is over because their conference is really regular business hours, eight to five or you know eight to four, nine to four, whatever. So you want to go there during the conference time. So it, this helps you plan on when to go out. It's, it's, such, it's a perfect app. Like I'm, I'm so happy for this app because used to be I would just go out and, you know, see what happens. But now I can strategically go out based on what's going on. And I can go to the specific hotel or area where I know there's going to be a concentrated amount of wealth. So yeah, so you can um, go there for happy hour and happy hour is usually from 5 to 8 p.m. depending some places 4 to 7 depending. But I'm telling you the time that you should go should be like from 5 to 8 because that's usually when the conference will be over and all that good stuff. If the hotel is crappy, which, and make sure you're picking events that are gonna have wealthy men at it. For example, a surgeon's conference or a tech conference or a hedge fund investment conference, it's probably gonna be better than a best bead show conference. Yes, I saw that on the list. <laughs> uh, that is being held at the Double Tree or the World Bar Fitness Summit. You're only going to have a bunch of fitness models and, and stuff. You're looking for old money. Just, just remember that. Uh, so make sure you're using your brain when you pick an event. Um, okay, so if the hotel is crappy, but it's a decent event, and by crappy, I mean like a Marriott. But chances are the really high net worth events will spring for a five-star hotel or establishment because they know their clientele and they want them to show up and stay there and all that good shit. Not, not that I'm saying, I'm not saying that you can't find good fish at a crappy hotel, but as I've said before, you need to be playing to win. You want the odds to be in your favor. I don't know about you, but I don't like working that hard. I actually hate working at all. I've said this a million times. <laughs> so I'm going to find a way to get what I need by putting the least amount of effort possible. Anywho, if the hotel is crappy or it's not, you know, it's fine, but you want to cast a wider net, 
Pay attention to the popular high-end restaurants near the venue. Go there right after happy hour and have, you know, a few bites and drinks at the bar. See who you're running to. Remember, it's a numbers game. The more you go out and the more high-end places you hang out, the higher your chances of meeting a sponsor. That's just math. Um, and also, you need to have your game plan. Plan. Uh, some girls don't even do this. It's like you just go out. You don't even know. Like Even fishermen, when they're going to catch fish, they know certain spots where the fish are. Whereas the rookies are just throwing their net wherever, hoping to catch something. You want to be the pros. So have your game plan. And you need to start practicing learning how to qualify a man as either short term, like our gentleman in Palm Beach, <laughs> which I'm sure I'll be texting them next time I'm hanging out. I'm sure they'll be buying me dinner again. Well, not they, my guy. Uh, <laughs> uh, or you classify him as long term like the guy I met last year, who I was actually hanging out with the same girl when I met her. And I still see him today, regularly, overnight, dinner dates, a few days at a time sometimes. The gift that keeps on giving. So you need to know, after talking to a guy for a few minutes, you need to put him in a box. Which one is it? Is he a, let me get this money right now guy? Or is he a, let's, let's cultivate this and, and you know keep it going. You will need to learn how to quickly vet them. And I'll give you a couple of tips. Okay. Um, if the guys are trying to have fun, you know, and, and they just met you and they want to go to other places with you and don't want the party to end, you can probably put them in the short term category, like the Palm Beach guys. Like you saw how they're like, let's go to a strip club. Cause he didn't want the night to end. He knew what he wanted, but he figured he needed to buy himself more time or whatever or loosen us up with more alcohol, whatever the hell it was. But when they're trying to, like, if you meet the guy today and he's trying to hang out with you today, he's probably going to end up being a short-term guy. Also, if he doesn't live in your area, although my one long-term guy doesn't live here either. So it, it depends, but you, you have to learn how to read their energy. It's, it's an acquired skill and it takes time and practice. So Keep that in the back of your mind. Now, if they're asking you questions about yourself, they want to make lunch or dinner plans for the next day, and I mean a proper plan where they're like, how do you like this restaurant? Yes. Okay, how about we meet there for lunch or dinner at this time? They make solid plans with you. Not, oh, I might be hanging out if you want to swing by. I swear that's how guys on Tinder think that dating works. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, I'm going to be going here if you want to hang out. That's not a date. I mean, a guy that's like, how would you like to have dinner at this restaurant? Because probably you said you like that restaurant at this time. That's, that's what a date is. So if they're making plans with you for the next day or, you know, the future, because maybe they have to go home to sleep or whatever. And of course the vibing, how do you vibe with them? That will also let you know whether or not the person is longer short term. But like I said, practice makes perfect. Um, I can quickly vet men and put them in categories because I've had some experience with this. So just keep going out, keep testing. And of course, I'm going to say this again for the kids in the back. You ready? You ready for this? Don't forget to look your absolute best when you go out. <laughs> I mean, it's sad that I have to say this, but I don't understand. Why would you waste all that time going out if you don't package the, the bait right? Like, come on now. Come on. Skirts and dresses. Skirts and dresses. As girly as you possibly can. No pants. No rompers. Skirts. Dresses. Even if you're in a colder climate, they have sweater dresses, boots. Oh, you can actually rock those boots because some guys have boot fetishes too, as we all know. So wear your sweater dress, boots, and a long wool pea coat or a trench coat. And, you'll, and they'll be wondering what's under that coat. And when you take it off, bam, your figure in a form-fitting sweater dress. Yes, and your scarf, you know. Take off your jacket, and they're like gonna be following you. 
with their eyes, the whole, they're probably going to physically follow you. <laughs> well, of course, they're going to see you first. But yeah, so again, work smarter, not harder. Like, maybe some people just like to work hard. I don't know, but I prefer to, to not work. <laughs> Or if, if I must, I prefer to work smart. Thank you very much. But yeah, um, but that's it. Um, I don't know. Does anyone have questions? If not, I'm going to end the live. Hey, everyone. Sorry, I've been ignoring you because I've been kind of going through my um my spill. Um, does anyone have any questions or anything? Oh, somebody just asked me a question in the chat. Um, how long did you go from regular chit chat with a guy to getting him to sell you money? Probably in about, like, if you're considering the time from when we met him at the restaurant to when we ended up at his house and I, cause I was the one handling all the finances for some reason. I always handled the finances. I don't. I, I don't know why. And plus, it was my guy too. My guy, the guy. When I say my guy, I mean the guy that liked me. Um, because his lawyer friend was questioning it the whole. Ugh, you know that friend that's like a buzzkill, always trying to ruin your shit. And I'm like, but because I'm over here trying to do the Zell, because he, I'm looking at his accounts. I'm like, baller. Literally, I said that to him. I was like, baller. He was like, hey, hey, hey. <laughs> So I'm like, all right. So I'm entering my information because he basically just handed me his phone to do it. Um, and the friend is like, you know, you don't have to do this, buddy. I'm like, um, bruh, <laughs> can you please go have fun? Go somewhere else. Why are you over here trying to ruin my bag? What did I do to you? Anyways, how, how long did um, I go from regular chit chat to getting him to Zell money? Probably an hour. Because if you come from when we sat down to eat, all our chit chatting. So basically, as soon as we left the restaurant, I suggested, as I said, we could go to the strip club and have a great time, or we could go to your house and have an even better time. My guy was like, fuck yeah, let's go home. <laughs> so yeah. Uh, how do you start your advertising? Fly Diva, get the book, tsegstore.com. Um, Sorry, I'm tilting my head reading from the Instagram um, live because my phone is in landscape because that's the proper way to film. Uh, <laughs> do you have a set rate while freestyling? I do not. It's just like at the strip club or, I mean, I guess that's the only thing I could really equate it to. I do not have a set rate. I charge based on the guy that I'm looking at because you might have a set rate and then fuck up your bag. If he was going to give you more, you know what I'm saying? So like we made out like bandits in, in less than two hours. Cause we, we were in and out of there probably in two hours or less. And we made out like bandits. And it's funny because I'm hanging out with my guy. My colleague is hanging out with hers, different, different rooms in the house. And probably like 20 minutes in, I'm just like, cause remember he, he had been doing Coke and anybody who knows <laughs> what cocaine is, it's the drug that makes you keep spending. And it also affects your, so it was a very easy night for me. So 20 minute in, um, S sweet. I didn't see your message. I don't know if you want to type it again. It says retracted. Um, so 20 minutes in, I'm like, would you look at a time? It's time for us to go unless you guys want to re up. And he was like, right away. Yeah, sure. Let's do it again. At first he was like, I don't know. So I'm getting dressed. Cause I told her, I was like, we're in and out. <laughs> I'm getting dressed and stuff. I'm walking out and, uh, my colleague has her guy literally on top of her <laughs> and I'm like time to go <laughs> and then the guy's like okay 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 we'll we'll do another we'll we'll stay for a little bit longer <laughs> oh, it was a fun night 
had a, I had a lot of fun. Yeah. But yeah. So I don't have set rates. Um, thanks, Zara. I'm going to miss you at the party. Um, I have it, and I thought everyone has a website. Go read it again, boo, because I tell you how to find out where to advertise and how to advertise. Um, like a dating app or website. Uh, email me, Vivian at tscgp.com, because I don't think I'm understanding your question. Do you let them say the number first? <sighs> there is no set rule books. And in this case of the Palm Beach guys, he threw out the number first. And the number he threw out was the going rate. It was, it was reasonable. And you could tell he had done this before. And then when I got home and I Googled his number, <laughs> he was actually blacklisted on Mr. Number as playing games. And I could see how the girls would think that because based on his personality, you would think he was a time waster, but he's actually not <laughs> if you knew how to read people. But I was looking at him in the eyes, face to face. So... It's different when you're staring at them face to face versus when they're texting you. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. But in in that case, he threw out the number. And you know what? Let me think about it. In most of the cases, I usually prefer for the guys to throw out the number so I can gauge just how generous they are. Mm. Whoop whoop! Glad you had a great night. <laughs> sure did. Um. But yeah, so, oh, she said I answered her question. Okay, cool. So um, yeah, for the most part, I usually always want them to throw out the number first, unless they're just like fighting me super hard on it because they're just weirdos or scared or just, I don't know. And then when they put it on me like that, I throw out like a ridiculously high number. And then they throw out the, the correct number <laughs> that they're supposed to throw, you know. But it's probably, even in negotiation, they tell you this too. You don't want to be the first one to make an offer. If, if you took any um, negotiation classes, which I did in college with my major, uh, you want the other party to make the first offer. If, if you can help it, because then you can kind of gauge, you know, where they are in their headspace. And also you don't risk leaving money on the table, but yeah. Okay. Any more questions? Otherwise I will bid you adieu, you hills. Get your merch, tsegstore.com. All right, I think that's it on the questions. So I'm going to go ahead and end the live. But thank you guys for tuning in. I'm going to try to do these, you know, more often, at least one a month, you know, until I can have more momentum because remember it's just me and I'm just showing face versus not does it really matter go listen to episode 57 we talked about this I talked about it with Miss Aurora Noor um it all it's all up to you and what your goals are what you're comfortable with it's all up to you. Go listen to that episode. I think it's going to give you some clarity. But yeah, as I was saying, I'm going to try to do this at least once a month until, you know, I start getting more free time when I pull back on work because I get scooped up by a billionaire hunty and then slowly just disappear altogether. <laughs> But until then, thank you so much for tuning in. I will catch you next time. If you have any questions that you would like for me to answer, email me, 
Vivian at tsegp.com. That's my email. Send all your questions there and I will answer them on the next live. I told you to go on Patreon for the Apu. <laughs> Not going to just throw it out to the general public. No, it's a secret for all my friends. Shh. Okay. So I'm going to bid you adieu, and I will see you on the next live. Bye.